Good morning, guys. It is uh, May 1st. I guess I shouldn't say guys. I should say gauses and guises. Uh, it is May 1st. We made it to May, guys. Whew. Uh, this is the um, the month, uh, Gracie and I's anniversary month. And I think it's my parents' anniversary month, too. Um, May is just a good time to get married. Um, I know we've been talking to a lot of people who had to postpone their 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 marriages, and that that's kind of sad. Um, there were two verses um, two verses that uh, I was thinking about this morning that uh, I just wanted to to spend a few minutes looking at. The first one is Matthew chapter five, verse nine. It says, "Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God." And then. On, and for the second one is Romans twelve eighteen. Let me mark my place here. There we go. Uh, Romans twelve eighteen. It says this. If I can find it, it was here a second ago. <laughs> um, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. It's just a great verse. If possible, so far as it depends on you. I, I know a lot of times what I do is this. Well, I tried. Well, see, that shows, first off, that I didn't really try, because what it's saying here is not a one-and-done kind of thing. It's, it's an ongoing thing. Continually, if you see an opportunity to make things better and to be at peace with somebody, take, take that step. If you see the opportunity, do that. And so there were a few things that I was thinking about with this. You know, it, it's easy to live at peace if nothing is going wrong. <clears throat> It's easy to get, to get along with people when there's no opportunity for disagreement. <laughs> um, it gets a lot more difficult. Excuse me. It gets a lot more difficult when there is opportunity for disagreement. Well, let me say this first before I say that. Uh, times of uh, we see times of testing as as sometimes as times to tell people our views on things sometimes it just seems like inconvenience is like here's my life and then there's this time of testing comes by and it's an intrusion on my life and it kind of just uh breaks what we're doing but i want to challenge you to look at times of testing as opportunities to love others it's easy to love others when you're not having a bad day when you're not going through something, when there's not something major or something scary happening. But it's a lot harder to take the time to love someone, not just with saying, oh yeah, I love them, but but with word, you know, I mean, sorry, with, with, but with deed, with actually putting your hands where your mouth is. It's a lot more difficult when there's, when there's difficult times, when you get back from the doctor with bad news, when there's something that's happening that's just scaring you to no end. Being able to still treat people with love and patience, that, that's difficult. Um, it's a lot easier to say, I don't have a problem with loving people when you're not around people who aren't irritating you. So I want to kind of say this too, you know, going on back to the whole thing about um, trying to live at peace with people. Different people have different opinions and those different opinions have caused them to take different courses of action. What you need to understand is that just the same as you have your own views, other people are going to have their own views. Just as, as you are assured that you are right, they are assured that they are right. Um, just as they have reasons for what they believe, and you have reasons for what you believe. Um, it, it's a, it's a two-way street. What we like to do is, is we kind of get pride to ourselves. My way is the right way because whatever. And so anybody who doesn't agree with my way is is wrong. And setting that aside for just a second, I want to once again read read the words of Jesus here in Matthew 5, 9, where it says, Blessed are the peacemakers. Peace isn't something that just happens. It's something that you make an actual effort to. And especially when there's dividing times or when there's, when there's a big issue going on, you have to go out of your way to make peace. And um, that's a lot... A lot easier said than done. See, as Christians, our job, or as people too, um, our job is not to make other people think like us. And I see that a lot of people are having a hard time with this. Um, when you are going through something and you think, well, this is how I see it, 
it's it's too often our kind of step that okay well you need to think like me because I'm obviously right and you're obviously wrong and I just don't really think that that's getting us anywhere and I think that a lot of times we as Christians need to watch out for schisms so basically we need to watch out for um, opportunities that could be dividing lines between people where people who you could have been a witness to or you could have been an encouragement to instead you are uh, tearing them down um, you know whereas you had an opportunity it's now become a wall And so what I see a lot of people saying is something like this, I think this is stupid, so you should too. Or I can't joke about this, so you shouldn't either. And there's kind of this this my way or the highway kind of thing. And I think that we are not really getting anywhere. And once again, I want to read Romans chapter 12, verse 18. And just, I encourage you to let this be a verse that you memorize. And uh, this is what it says. It says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If it is at all possible. And there's a lot of times where it is possible, we just refuse to because they're just an idiot, you know, and it's like, well, I'm sure that they might think the same thing about you too, you know, and so you really have to step out of your comfort zone to show love to people in a way that may not come naturally. Um, so I'm definitely talking about putting forth effort. So here are just a few ideas that I had. First off, listen more than you talk. Uh, especially on social media and that kind of stuff. Listen more than you talk. You don't always have to give your opinion on stuff. Um, there's a verse that says, um, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Let's say that you are right and the other person is 100% wrong. Um, getting angry about it and yelling, that's not going to produce what you want it to produce. Another idea I had, don't always share your opinions. <laughs> that's really hard to do, but sometimes it's better to just keep your opinions to yourself. And uh, remember that. Uh, another idea I had, stop posting things online. Ooh, this is difficult because we all think that, once again, our opinion is right and we want everybody else to know how we're right and they're wrong. <laughs> so what we do is we post stuff online to, to let it all out, to, to, to give all of our points. And that's really hard not to do. I'm, I'm not saying that I'm perfect or that I'm not having a hard time with this. I'm, I'm just, these are just some ideas that I had to, once again, where's that verse... If possible, so far as it depends on you, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. <laughs> That's hard. Another idea, refrain from posting, uh, refrain from telling it like it is. Sometimes people, well, this is how it really is, and do, 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 do. And look, here's the thing. I'm not telling you to trust the news. I'm not telling you to trust po politicians. I'm not telling you to, uh, to change who you are. I'm not, I'm not telling you any of that stuff, okay? What I am telling you is, I don't really see, foresee Jesus wasting his time with ministry as talking about the emperor or um, things that are going on in the Roman world or whatnot. He had a much bigger purpose. And I think that we would do well to remember our bigger purpose in the midst of our squabbles, in the midst of our irritations, in the midst of uh, our trying situations that we're going through. Um, another another opinion, another idea I had, try to understand their point of view. It's easy to say, well, they're just being stupid, or that person's just an idiot. It's harder to take the initiative to say, okay, help me understand where you're coming from. And not in like a degrading way. Like, help me understand how you could think something so stupid. No, that's not what I'm saying. But like, I I don't understand why you think that and then like listen to what they have to say and then oh you know think about what they don't just instantly discredit somebody because it's a different opinion than your own try to understand their point of view and then the last thing that i really think ties all this together is just very three very short things be forgiving be loving be supportive be forgiving be loving and be supportive ruth graham bell once said that in every in every seat there's a broken heart and I think we would do well to remember that people still need encouragement. Um, people, no matter if you agree with them or not, whether they're Republican or Democrat or rich or poor or whatever, people people need each other and they need love and they need 
um, encouragement. And I think that we as Christians and as people we do well to remember that, and and maybe remember that, just because you get hot and hot and, and irritated about like um, something that's important to you, doesn't mean that that's all that there is, and doesn't mean that that thing that's really important to you will always be important. Sometimes things just come and go. So I want to encourage you have a great have a great rest of the day. Uh, Chuck's gonna have a, another uh, great word for you guys tomorrow, which is Saturday. Um, I hope that your May goes fantastic, and uh, see you guys.